God bless you today uh, once more for a special privilege of meeting with you and sharing with you the burden that I feel the Lord is laying in our hearts. This is the end time and everybody knows this is the end time. And um, the day of our departure is closer than when we first By our standard, you can see that um, the church is coming to the very closer to the close of the curtain. The church is coming to closure. And um, I pray that the consciousness that we are pilgrims will be afresh in our hearts. The higher you go, the more slippery it becomes. I know the Lord didn't promise a smooth voyage, but He promises a safe landing. I am believing Him that we shall make it. But there is a warning that you and I will not depart from the track. For the day is very, very close. Let's bow our heads in prayers. Daddy, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. Thank you because night is far spent. We're asking for revival. But I pray that you may make us combustible material. That we will become what you want us to be. And that we might finish strong at the end of the day. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As I move around, there seems to be a crying, a yelling. A lot of people seem to say that the standard is getting lower and lower in a lot of settings. And um, the question is it, can God change his standard because of the changing world? Has God diluted his standard? A lot of churches change their policies. But what has happened with the standard of God? And the issue is this. Those who change their standards are not the final judge. Churches might change their standard. It doesn't mean God has changed his own standard. And so, I have a very special burden today to minister on the uncompromising standard of God. The uncompromising standard of God. I really looked at the scripture. I saw things that startled me. I saw things that made me afraid. And I say, wow, this God, <laughs> we must be careful. Oh. People should not mess with him. Because he can't change his standard. Even if the entire world will perish in a second, for God to maintain his integrity, God doesn't matter. Let me show you a picture in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. I read something in Joshua chapter 7 uh, from verse 1. Joshua chapter 7 from verse 1. But Israel has acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted. Think. Echam, son of Kami, just uh, read with me Joshua 7. Let's read from verse 1 to 11. Joshua 
Achan, son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, or Ai, which is near Bethavon, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary all the people, for only a few men are there. So about 3,000 men went up, but they were routed by the men of air, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slope. At this, the heart of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell first down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same, sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Ah, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Oh Lord, what can I say? Now that Israel has been routed by his enemies, the Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Uh, let me put something here that looks funny. I guess as Joshua was speaking, God may have said, I don't mind. When Joshua said, what will you do for your great name? God must have said, I don't mind. Provided I maintain my standard. You know, there's something that I saw here. That made me say this God. Now here was Israel. Here were the opponents of the Israelites. The typical nonsense wisdom. Or uh, let me say small wisdom that as a man. A, 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 somebody will say okay. Let us first of all deal with our enemies. And then after that we will come back. And God will begin to correct Israel. But God, in order to maintain his own standard, God said, let me allow my own people to be defeated. Let me allow Israel to be defeated, even before the lowly rated people. So that I may maintain my standard. That they might know that I am the Lord. My eyes are purer than to behold iniquity. That I will maintain my standard. That they may know that my standard cannot be compromised. That no matter how precious, no matter how I love you, when you go contrary to my standard, I must strike. My friend, this is the, this is the center of my message. And this will cause everybody no matter what you're doing privately and publicly, to begin to fear God. That God cannot compromise his standard. God allowed his own people to be defeated. God allowed the opponents of his people to jubilate over his people. Why? That he might maintain his standard. That he might show that his standard cannot be compromised. Now, I want to say, God has not changed though. Let me come back to Nigeria. I, I'm a Nigerian, a bona fide citizen of Nigeria, and I'm preaching from Nigeria. Maybe you might be listening to this message from any other part of the world. Maybe from any African country or Europe or America or Russia. But I can give this illustration from here. You can also look at what you have in place in your own country. Several organizations have been put in place in Nigeria. There's an organization called the Nigerian Standard Organization. We also have what we call the NAVDAC, which are responsible for uh, food and drug, drugs, you know, trying to 
this organization, the set standard. There are expectations, a standard for the kind of food or drug or even bottled water that we get into the market. They even have laboratory. They test this thing to make sure that what is consumed by the public is actually to a standard. The standard that will not be poisonous to the, to, to the inhabitants, to the citizens. Apart from this, Nigerian Standard Organization and uh, the NAFDAQ, we also have qualification for you to enter university in Nigeria. The basic qualification is that you will have five credits from either GCE or NECO. Five credits. And apart from five credits, you are supposed to get jump score depending on the cut-off point of a particular school. These are standards put in place by men. Even if you are going to United States or United Kingdom, you will go to the embassy looking for visa. There are standards that the United States or United Kingdom, they have put in place for, for to qualify you for visa. Sometimes they will tell you, you must have a family tie. You must have job tie, financial tie. You know, a family tie, something that will, you know, they have their own standard depending on the kind of visa that you want. Now, these are standards put in place. Go to the university. For you to get a degree in the university, you are expected to complete a certain number of credit hours to qualify you for the degree that you're looking for. These are standards. Coming to Nigerian politics, there are qualifications. Before somebody will contest, there are standards. There are academic standards you ought to reach. And in terms of criminal record, there are standards. These are standards. Even there are standards that a, 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 an incumbent leader, whether in the legislature or in the executive, uh, if, if he no longer meets such standards, they could begin to move for the impeachment of such a person. Oh yes, because men and women, it is in it in mind that we expect standard. Okay, of course, before somebody qualify, maybe you receive driving license, there is a standard that somebody is supposed to actually reach before you get driving license. I mean the standard, the normal thing, what should be normal and um let me ask can man be more righteous than god nigeria has put standard every nation of the world they have standard there are rules there are standards even to fly before an airplane airline will be allowed to get into the air there are standard they ought to meet daily my beloved Daily, you will realize that there are standards that people require for you to qualify for anything. And anybody that wants to set up an organization very well will not compromise the standard. Because when you begin to compromise the standard, there will be influx of, you know, facts. You will fake the organization. You will fake the nation. You will fake everything in the market. You will, you will see people, if, there's, if we don't have standard, people will import poison and put it into the market. Men and women will go and buy the poison and they will eat the poison and they will die. I get embarrassed sometimes when you get to the port or go somewhere and somebody will ask, are you not in Nigeria? In the office, they will ask, are you not in Nigeria? On the highway, they may ask, are you not a Nigerian? I do not know completely what they mean by are you not a Nigeria? But it bothers me when somebody is asking you, are you not a Nigerian, especially when he wants to extort money from you? Or when he wants you to give me a kind of bribe and asking you, are you not a Nigerian? Especially when you are on the side of 
when you're trying to resist such a move and the person will ask you are you not a nigerian i want to say it was not so from the beginning the founding fathers of nigeria didn't put it in place like that they didn't put it for the system to be corrupted no or to be corrupt i see that there is a, a, a sort of infiltration diabolical infiltration into the system certain things are now sort of customary but remember these are man man can change man can change man can lower man can abuse a privilege but let me remind you god is unchangeable and <laughs> let me remind you if you believe god is unchangeable it means his standards cannot change what he was is what he is and it's what he shall be oh yes i want to get back to the bible and there are things i saw in the scriptures that thrilled me i don't want to be in a hurry i don't want to shout above your head this message i just want us to get back to the scriptures and look at how god dealt with people and we can both we can look at it and say wow god now what i regard as shocking news in the bible now let me show you something just bring your bible i want to show you something go to genesis chapter 2 open your bible to genesis chapter 2 look at genesis chapter 2 and um read verse um let's read verse 16 and 17 genesis chapter 2 and the lord commanded the man you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat of it you will surely die that is god speaking god says what he means and means what he said now if you read chapter 3 from verse 1 16 it's just a story how man rebelled man went contrary to that thing god instructed them not to do and god pronounced death god drove them away now look at the shocking news god had only one couple you know god had only one couple that is they were not two if you were god maybe or if you were personal advisor to god in our own ground we would have said to god remember this are your only couple the only people you're expecting to get into procreation and the field of the earth god had no alternative apart from adam and eve no alternative but god didn't mind he didn't bother the consequences when they broke the standard god said even though you are the only couple that i have even though you are the only person occupying even though you are my only hope it is only through you that i hope to fill the earth but because i am maintaining my standard i must punish you because i am maintaining my standard you must get out of this place the consequences i pronounce death sickness suffering must come upon you that i may maintain my standard that you may know that my eyes are purer than to behold iniquity hey god he had only one cup yet he didn't bother the consequence when they broke the standard mm. let me tell somebody don't mess with god don't mess with god for the god that i preach about it's a god that cannot compromise his standard generations will come and go kingdoms will rise and fall government will move but god cannot has never cannot change his standard god has not has never will never change his standard god cannot has never will never cannot 
change his standard. I am talking about the uncompromising standard of God. He's not a man to change his war. God cannot be bribed. Nobody can bribe him. Oh yes. He, he, you can't bribe him. His words are yea and amen. His, he can't change his word. God can do anything to maintain his standard. Let me take you to another place. In the same Genesis that startled me. A shocking news. Genesis chapter 6. Let me take you to somewhere. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Now look at what the Bible says. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become. And that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals, and creatures that move along the ground, the birds of the earth, for I am grieved. That I have made me. Now, let me take you to another place. Men started committing iniquity and atrocity. God warned them. Men continued to rebel against the word of the Lord. Men refused. They thought God was a joker. They thought God is not serious after all. Just like some people today. Maybe deceiving themselves into thinking that God is not serious after all. And that's why they harden their hearts. Go ahead to do things. And ask to rebellion against the principles of the Almighty God. Both in the church and outside the church. And everything goes syndrome. Compromises. And people are still doing what they are doing. Thinking that God will change at the end of the day. But let me remind you, God's wages may not come in the daytime. It may come at the end of the day. We well, look at a newer generation. When God said this, now verse 11 say of chapter 6, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their way. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people. I am going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside an ark. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long. 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle and upper deck. I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heaven. Every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. My beloved, <laughs> if you move to 7 chapter 7 verse 21 of the same Genesis the Bible says every living thing that moved on the earth perished birds, livestock, wild animals all the creatures that swam over the earth and all mankind everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostril died every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out men and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the bears of the earth we are wiped from the earth you know what bothers me about this passage god decided to wipe away every flesh when i think of every flesh pregnant women were there children were there old people were there no matter their age because God was maintaining a standard. God said, I will wipe away every because of the corruption in the land. I'm going to wipe them away. And my brother, God to maintain his standard, his uncompromising standard. 
He wiped away these creatures. He wiped away everybody. They perished. All of them perished. I say, all of them perished. Everything perished. Dear listener, may we repent from playing on God's intelligence. May we repent from thinking that God can change his standard. Pastor may change his standard, but God cannot. Denomination may change their standard, but God cannot. You may decide it at your church presbytery, church council. You may decide it as a synod meeting and change your standard. But that does not mean that God has changed his standard. His standard cannot be compromised. He is the Lord. There's a song that says, He is the Lord. He changed it not. He is the Lord. He changed it not. He is the Lord. He changed it not. He is the Lord. He changed. He can never change his standard. That's what I want to tell you. God can never. He wiped away these creatures. He wiped away everybody. They perished. All of them perished. I say. All of them perish. Dear listener, may we repent from playing on God's intelligence. May we repent from thinking that God can change his standard. Pastor may change his standard, but God cannot. Denomination may change their standard, but God cannot. Oh yes. You may decide it at your church presbytery, church council. You may decide it as a synod meeting and change your standard. But that does not mean that God has changed his standard. His standard cannot be compromised. He is the Lord. There's a song that says, He is the Lord. He changed it now. He is the Lord. He changed it now. He is the Lord. He changed it now. He is the Lord. He changed. He can never change his standard. That's what I want to tell you. God can never change his standard. His words are yea and amen. That's why we got to fear him. Oh. Yes. The earth could be swallowed. There's another man that each time I study about him in the scriptures, I it blows my mind. But the only way I could, you know, look at it again, and it's just nothing but that God was maintaining his standard. I, I was reading about a man called Moses. And um, just like I told you, I, I'm really interested in getting at the scriptures, uh, allowing us to look at the scriptures. If it is the canon, if it is the rule of faith, if it is what we should actually acknowledge, everybody, the church, the leadership of the church, everybody anywhere, outside or inside, should bow to the word of God. We should take it as our authority. It is the highest standard of everything we are doing. Let every dogma be lie. Let every other thing be lie. But let the word of God not be, not, not be, not be joked with at all. Now, look at Moses. You know that I was reading where the Bible says Moses forsook the pleasures of Egypt for the calling. You know what Moses suffered because of his calling, because of his identity with his people. Moses refused to be called Pharaoh's son that he might identify with the people of God. And as I look at this, let me chip in something to one person listening to me now. What you suffer because of the work, because of God, is not what matters. What matters is how you end it. Somebody may be persecuted. Somebody can suffer because of the work of God. But it might not finish in him. This is a very delicate issue. Not what you suffer. Don't tell me what you have suffered because of Christianity. What you suffer because of your faith does not qualify you for heaven. What you suffer because of your faith. At the end of the day, God has a standard that he wants to maintain. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24, 
The Bible says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. It means Moses rejected all the government has security. Moses rejected all the goodies, the food. I want you to picture this. Take your mind to the government house. Take your mind to some of these elected executives. The kind of protection they enjoy. The kind of um, uh, encourage. I mean, but Moses refused that. Why? That he, might be, that he might identify with the people of God. But my brother, my sister, it beats my imagination if it's as I'm preaching. It makes my heart solely. That this man who suffered, he was persecuted. He was sent out. But something happened in Numbers chapter 20 verse 8. That God said, 7 said, the Lord said to Moses, Take the staff, you and your brother Aaron, gather the assembly together, speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community, so they and their livestock can drink. That was God's instruction. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. And Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck a rock twice with his staff. And water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. My brother, just a little shift from what God said. God says, speak to the rock, but he beat the rock. What I may call as a human being, a little shift. And God said, because you have done this, you didn't honor me. I must maintain my standard. You know, when I was reading about Moses, they said, there was no person God talked with face to face like he did to him. In other words, my previous communication with God will not make God not to maintain his standard. The previous achievement in my ministry and life will not make God not to maintain his standard. God has a standard to maintain. Mm. And my brethren, I remember when Israel sinned, it was this Moses who in, he, he, he interceded on their behalf and God answered. And God canceled the death. But here, Moses did this. God said, because you have done this, this thing you have suffered for for a long time, this thing that has cost you almost your entire life, the thing you have worked for, my God, the thing you have worked for, Moses, you won't enter. I say you won't enter, Moses. I must maintain my standard. I think Moses attempted to pray. Uh, let me show you something in Deuteronomy. I want to show you something in Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let me show you something that happened. Brethren, this uncompromising standard of God it's a very serious affair. In Deuteronomy 32, 51 and 51 and um, 52, look at what happened. The Bible said, this is because when, when God was speaking. Let me begin from 48. On that same day, the Lord told Moses, go up into the abiding rain to Mount Nebo in Moab across from Jericho. View Canaan, the land and giving the Israelites as their own possession. There on the mountain, 
that you have climbed, you will die and be gathered to your people, just as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. Why will you die, Moses? 51 says, This is because both of you broke faith with me in the presence of the Israelites at the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, in the desert of Zin. Because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore, you will see the land only from a distance. You will only see it from a distance. But you will not enter the land and give it to the people. Ah! When Moses, Israel sinned, Moses prayed and he prayed them out and God forgave. But now, God, to maintain his own standard. And he said, listen, you know, <laughs> I tell you, you will see it, but you will not. I say you are not going to enter it. And in chapter 34 of Deuteronomy from verse 1, he said, Moses climbed my neighbor from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all the Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Pam, as far as well. Then the Lord said, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over it. In fact, when I was reading the scriptures, when Moses tried to pray, God said, don't mention it again. Don't ever mention it again. But, unlike today, Moses still anointed his, uh, uh, anointed uh, someone that would take over from him and handed over. God was maintaining his standard. If God was able to deal with Moses whom he loved, if God was able to deal with Moses who performed the extraordinary miracle, a man who saw the burning bush, a man who said, let my people go, if God was able to maintain his standard and dealt with the man and then allow the man to enter, Mr. Preacher, Mr. Pastor, Mr. Bishop, Mr. General Overseer, Mr. Archbishop, what do you think? How do you think God will handle you? Where do you think you will be at the end of the day? He has a standard. You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sins so that nobody will see you. But you cannot hide it from God. His eyes are purer than to behold iniquity. Men are more righteous than you are. Look at what God did with Samson. Samson was God's champion. But God abandoned his champion. For the Philistines to use his champion, I mean, to make a mockery of Jehovah's champion. That he, God, might maintain a standard. We are very deaf. We are very stubborn. We don't hear. We don't allow history to teach us. And that's our problem. We think we can deceive God. Can we outsmart God? It is impossible. God has a standard. He abandoned his champion. Look at Oza in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Oza, he touched the earth. To him, he may say, I was trying to help God. I was trying to help so that the earth will not fall. But God said, I have a standard. I have described the man that should touch the, the man that should carry the earth. Uzzah, in your human sympathy, you don't compromise my standard. Because you have done this. Uzzah died. Because God was maintaining his standard. I'm asking you as you're listening to this message. Do you think God has changed his standard? No, 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 he has not changed his standard. Look at the church. Look at the world today. People get rotten money 
and still pay the tithes to the church. They get rotten, blown money, 419 money, money gotten out of cheek, and they pay it to the church. Well, God has not changed his standard. Today, those who are not born again can have a say and seat, special seat in the church. God has not changed his standard. He has not changed his standard. If an occultist man is in the church, it doesn't mean God has changed. Man may change, but God has not changed. A dead man can be a general, a general overseer of a church. He can be in the committee. Somebody that has no experience with God. It does not mean God has changed his standard. Because somebody has financial power, money power, they might be giving him a post. Today, people give posts to give to people who have huge, who are, who, who are money people. God has not changed his standard. That you're a PhD holder, holder in one academic discipline does not qualify you to be a leader in the church. Because you, are, you can still be a PhD holder but a spiritual kindergarten. You can still be even a millionaire yet you don't know anything spiritually. And they will put you there. Ha, post can destroy you. Position can kill you in the church. Position can kill you, especially if you get into it unadvised. Yes. Yes. Has God changed his standard? That a bishop or general overseer or a church person or pastor or evangelist or deacon or whatever title that is living in immorality and is still preaching, still handling position does not mean that God has changed his standard. Those who are smart in iniquity can occupy pulpit and they occupy some position. That does not mean that God has changed his standard. Some who are now called former saint. Former saint. A former saint. You were a saint before. But even though you are in the church now, you are no more a saint. You know that one. Your name is former saint. Because you have changed, you have changed. I'm looking, look, you, you, you. Because you have changed, that does not mean that God has changed. You have changed your principle. You've changed your standard. What you hated before, you've gone back to the vomit. Things you hated before, the iniquity you hated, you are now swimming in it. God has not changed. You are joining people. You are joining all those gangs in the church. Compromisers. You are joining them. You are following them. You are following their ways. Let me tell you, God will spare no person. He will spare no person. Do you know our problem? Our problem is problem of delayed judgment. Problem of delayed... You know, in those days in the old, if you do anything, even fire can come from heaven and consume you. But let me show you what the Bible says. Let me show you what the Bible says. That is our problem. Why people are still getting on iniquity? Because God seems to be quiet. And let me tell you, don't mess with God. When God is quiet, something is going on in his mind. Because God is quiet about, look at you, you've been killing people. You're a politician. You shed blood in order to remain there. You kill. You do loot in order to maintain your position. And God is looking at you. Let me tell you, you are living a miserable life. God will not be quiet forever. God will not be quiet forever. A day shall come when he will judge you. And when God begins to judge you, no man will deliver you. Police will not deliver you. Security will not deliver you. No man, bribery, can never deliver you. I'm talking about the uncompromising standard of God. Look at, um, 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 if you look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. Matthew 13 from 25. Oh my God, help us, help us. That we might know mm, that you are a God that can never change. 1325. He says, While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed wheat among the wheat and went away. I, I won't go ahead and read it because, but you can read it at your own time. Matthew 1325. That the master went and sowed good seed. While men were sleeping, the enemy went and sowed wheat. Or what they call that. When the wheat sprout up from the haze, the wheat also appear. But the, the servant came and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did the wheat come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servant said, Do you want us to go and pull them? No! He answered, Because while you are pulling the wheat, 
you may root up the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until harvest. This is the problem that we have now. Weed have come to the church. Why the weed is growing? Ta is growing. I mean, weed is growing. Good wheat is growing. They are all growing. Sometimes in the in the farm, the the the, the weed might be, the weed might even be uh, more prominent than the wheat itself. Yes, people might even know the weed in the church more than the correct seed. The person might be jumping, known chairman of the chairman of the other one, chairman of the other one. Yeah. But look at our problem. The problem of is delayed judgment. The Lord said, let two of them continue to grow until the judgment. Oh. Two of them, let them continue. So that the weed might begin to even flourish, thinking that. But at the end of the day, they will be gathered. That's the problem that we have. Weeds, stars have come to the church. Oh, yeah. The issue is not the name of your church. The issue is, are you born again? Are you really meant for heaven? Are you a Christian? Do you have the consciousness of heaven? Don't tell me how much you have been given to the church. Let me announce. God has asked me to tell you. He has a standard that cannot be compromised. God must judge. Judgment day. Is coming when the saints shall might to heaven with Jesus as their leader, marching on one last soldier, yes, able soldier, singing and rejoicing. Oh, he had us in a crying. Oh, no, had I known. Oh, no, the sinner's voice I hear. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone. Marching to join the glory of Oh no, had I know. Oh no, the sinner's voice I hear. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone. Marching to join the glory above. Oh no, had I known. I have another important passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. That we don't just need to leave out this message. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Listen to it. When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, the heart of people are filled with schemes to do wrong. Because sentence against iniquity is not quickly executed. The heart of the people go ahead. After all, I did it the other day. I came out, nothing happened. After all, I did it. I was very smart. Nothing happened. Because sentence against iniquity was not executed quickly. They took it for granted. Been deceived into thinking that God can change his standard. And they go ahead drinking iniquity. Are you here? Are you listening to my message? And you think you're a Christian. You think you're a minister. Or maybe you say you don't need God. You go ahead drinking iniquity. And you look at yourself early in the morning. You are very healthy. You are not sick. You say, okay. I am on. This two one you are living is not life. Oh. You are very lifeless. The Bible said, he who has the son has life. But if you don't have the son, you are lifeless. Let me tell you, God has a standard. Though. If you are born again, your name will be written in the book of life. When you backslide, your name will be cancelled in the book of life. There are people in the church whose names have been cancelled in the book of life. There may be people on the pulpit whose names have been cancelled in the Lamb's book of life. Because God must maintain his standard. That's why he said in Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. Not everybody who said Lord. Not every tongue speaker will go to heaven. Not everybody who is zealously doing work. Not even performing miracles. Yes, I know. 
miracle authenticates you know the world but i also know that um somebody can do a miracle and pull crown but let me tell you i don't know if your miracle is more than the one the moses performed but let me tell you god has a standard to maintain if you're powerful in power demonstration be powerful also in holiness because a day will come when we will appear the bible said god shall bring everything into judgment he must surely bring everything into judgment whether good or whether bad night is far spent does it mess up where did he abandon your holiness where did he abandon your standard where did he abandon what you used to be who deceived you which group did you join which people deceived you ah let me tell you have you fallen above below standard as you're listening to this message it is also a message of hope samson fell below the standard of god but a day came when he realized that he has fallen he prayed he reconciled with god and god restored him I really want to have a prayer section with you now. Oh, I, I just have a burden to have a prayer session with you. You know that this is not how you started. You know this is not how you started. You hated iniquity. But I don't know what happened along the line. You missed the mark. Things you hated. You became a dog. You went back to your vomit. Those your standard for which you were known. You started following the crowd. And you forgot. That what is popular may not be right. And what is right may not be popular. Instead of thinking about the standard of God. What you are not thinking of. Standard of the people. What will I do so that people will help me. People will say yes. You know where we are now. So that people will congratulate you. Let me tell you. Those people are not the financial. They are not the standard holder. Oh, I want you to bow your heads in prayer and begin to talk to God. Jesus. Mm, my God. Jesus. Just tell him just as I am without one plea. Except you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you don't you can't maintain the standard of God. It's only when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior that He'll give you the grace to live the life. Let's pray. Papa, we come to you in sackcloth and ashes. We are guilty, condemned before you, worthy, worthy to be demolished, worthy to be sent to hell. We have compromised our standard. We have abandoned the standard you kept. And we have followed the crown. Father, we confess. We confess. We have power. We don't have the power of our own. But Lord, we invite your presence. We invite your grace. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Bring the restoration upon our lives. Revive your work in the midst of the year. Revive the church. Let revive our fire come back to the church. To the glory of your name. Thank you, Daddy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm your brother, Chidi Okoraf. We're available for revivals and conferences and crusades. Our address is 2 Ekuruke Street, Omaha, Abia State, Nigeria. Post Office Box 1990, Omaha, Abia State, Nigeria. You can also reach us with our telephone number 
88 or uh, GSM 080-330-76980. In case you want to reach us through email, you can send out chidiograph04 at yahoo.com. Chidiograph04 at yahoo.com. And you want to be our partner in revival. Yes, our partner in revival. Call us, write us. We are praying for revival. That's revival. We hit the church so that at the end of the day, we will not just talk about the kingdom and not become partakers of the kingdom. That we shall both talk about the kingdom and be there and meet at the final rally. Because the final rally is very, very important and it shall be the ultimate victory. It is not what we are doing now that matters. It is how we end. God bless you. I love you. Call me. Bye.